Armin, uh, I had to cut you off because we were going to a break, but please complete your thought about uh, innovation in Canada. Mm -hmm. I see the opportunity not only as an economic opportunity, but also the uh, health benefit, of course, that innovative technologies and, and therapies offer uh, folks. And as a Canadian company, it is uh, disheartening to see that most of our adoption actually comes from outside of Canada. And I do think that is an area that does prompt companies, Canadian companies, to leave Canada because, of course, it's logical that companies want to be close to their customers. Um, so I think that's our big opportunity is to continue to focus on not only the research and starting companies, but to uh, retain our companies through uh, making sure that their products and services are adopted locally as well. Uh, Dr. Michael Cook, uh, you obviously your company is a biotech company. A lot of a lot of biotech in the news these days with the vaccine and whatnot. Uh, I was just wondering. Uh, obviously, uh, we're in the era or age of COVID. Hopefully, a short era or age, but you never know. Uh, how have circumstances changed for your company because of uh, this COVID era? Yeah, yeah, and fingers crossed that we're coming to an end of this era, and hopefully, the next year will. A whole lot more promise. Um, so for us, actually, we've, we've been okay. We've been working remotely, um, which has been tricky for the team, but um, we have managed to execute on the plan. Uh, so we were able to um, meet our objective, getting a no objection letter from Health Canada to proceed with the phase one. And we have also been successful in raising financing. So uh, despite COVID, we've uh, proceeded as planned. Uh, I think looking forward to next year, I think sort of managing supply chain issues is going to be a key thing. So managing supply of our raw materials for the manufacturing for the phase one is going to be key. I think also it's going to be an interesting time for venture capital financing uh, later next year and seeing how we weather this storm financially. Uh, so definitely interesting times next year. Uh, Dr. Kevin Smith, you're the CEO of a major, major uh, health institution here in Canada and around the world, as you alluded to. Uh, aside from lack of sleep, which I'm sure was part of the issue, uh, how else has uh, COVID changed uh, the way you're looking at the sector? It's really changed, I think, what um, our patients expect of us and how we expect to work. So um, at University Health Network, as an example, prior to COVID, we did about 250 virtual visits uh, a week. With COVID, we've moved to 7,000 to 8,000 uh, virtual visits a week, which is which frankly wouldn't have happened without uh, an event as catastrophic as COVID. Um, in addition to that, we're hearing loudly and clearly from customers or patients what their expectations are and how they'd like digital to be an ongoing part of their care process in the future. But I think we all know that the engaged consumer and the knowledgeable consumer results in better quality and at a, at a better cost. I, I think that will be a fundamental change. I think the other piece that Armin touched on and is the procurement process. And I think few of us would say procurement processes in Canada are simple. They're not. Uh, they can sometimes be labyrinthine and very frustrating, particularly to startups. And one of the opportunities I think we have as, uh, as Canadians is to really re-examine re whether or not buying Canadian and creating, creating buying and, and uh, investing in Canadian-made products is something that we can advantage. I recognize that's in the context of broader um, statutes and laws within uh, international purchasing. But many jurisdictions have gone in that direction. And I think for companies like our, our my two colleagues are speaking about Michael and Armin, there are some real opportunities to advantage Canadian companies within Canada. Uh, thank you. Uh, Armin, uh, last word to you. And we got about a minute before the next break. Uh, any changes because of COVID in your organization? Of course. I mean, I think every organization went through changes this year and, you know, these changes were unexpected. Uh, I don't think anybody really expected such a significant curveball when they were planning um, for the year last year and IntelliJoint was no different. Of course, our products and services uh, help uh, patients undergoing joint replacement surgery, which is an elective procedure. So, of course, across many jurisdictions, elective procedures were paused, uh, which of course had a direct impact on our business. But I think what it did force us to do was come together and come closer together as a team. 
you know, it challenged our leadership, it challenged um, the group. And, you know, thankfully, now looking back at the, hopefully the, the tail end of, of this pandemic, IntelliJoint is better for this pandemic. It, it forced us to really think about what's important. It forced us um, to really embrace a philosophy, which was uh, plan for the worst and hope for the best. And that clear communication, I think, uh, really gained trust within the organization and allowed us to push through one of the biggest challenges we've ever faced as an organization. And I honestly do believe we're better for it. On that hopeful note, we're going to take one more break. 